Hello friends, welcome back. I have a lot of information to share with you today. You have to really bear with me. <laughs> this is what happens when you put off a prophecy news update and by the time I'm ready to present, there's so much to catch up with, of course. So as usual, I've narrowed things down, even though I've got like 20 odd tabs opened up, as you can see at the top on my screen. I'm going to begin by covering headlines. I'm going to give you just the headlines to save time because I want to invest majority of today's time in the scriptures because they are the most important. We can read the news, we can read the headlines and still be lost without direction unless we go to the Bible and read what the words of the prophets tell us. As you know, in my previous messages, I speak a lot about the end times, Bible prophecy, because it's very important. Some of the scriptures we're going to repeat today, and because so many subscribers have recently joined my channel, there's some things they've never heard me talk about, really. So I think it's important just for them to welcome them and just to let them know about the end times according to the Word of God, what's written. What can we understand from what's already written? Okay, so without further ado, let's go. Lord help. <laughs> Before this website, foreignpolicy.com, keeps pestering me to subscribe, I'm just going to get through this article first. There's only so many news outlets I'm subscribed to. Can't possibly sign up to all of them. But this one in particular really sums up the world geopolitical situation as we're seeing it today. Written by Lynn O'Donnell. It's a new great game. Again, <clears throat> we're seeing the world, friends, fight over a region, a particular region on the world map known as Central Asia. Because this region, friends, is going to be a very much fought after region in our world because of the natural resources. The fringes of Russia's former empire appear to be fraying as Central Asia looks to a future in which it can choose its own friends and play them off against one another. Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine has sullied his standing across the steppe while diverting his attention from countries he regarded as in inviolate pieces of the post-Soviet jigsaw. And what have we been saying on this channel, friends? What have I been saying? From the moment this war broke out, this conflict, Russia and Ukraine, it was guaranteed that this is a huge distraction which will lead in the ultimate pulling away of Russian influence in the region. Not entirely, but quite significantly. And what happens when you create a vacuum after Russia leaves? Step in the Turkic nations. Once the heart of a great game played up by the Russian and British empires in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Central Asia is again a strategic jewel being fought over by the big three and some smaller players as the tectonic plates of global influence shift. Yes. The countries collectively known as the Stans, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, who, like I've been telling you about, are all a part of the organisation of Turkic states. These countries offer plenty of potential rewards in this renewed global tussle because where are we going in the, in the coming future, friends? We're seeing a weakening West and a strengthening East, even though the East is not entirely united. They're still going to be prosperous and advance more greatly, while the West is going to deteriorate. So what does that mean? Buckle up. Difficult times ahead. We need to take precautions. We ought to be a people of preparation. Because with this time of difficulty comes a great tribulation. Because by this time the beast would have formed, 
Persecution will be horrendous. It's already bad as it is, but it will intensify greatly. Okay? But when I share these news updates, it's showing you where everything's going. We're going over here. The attention is going over here. It's in line with the Bible. The Word of God is telling us there's this particular region. Before I forget, let me open up my visuals. These former empires, friends, we're going to talk about them today. I'm going to bring up the image of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 2. Do you remember? I, I speak about this a lot, right? In Daniel chapter 2. Nebuchadnezzar is given a vision, a dream. He sees a statue. He seeks interpretation, somebody who can interpret the dream for him. And Daniel, a wise prophet of God, a man of God, is given the ability to interpret the dream and he breaks it down. And we're going to go into that scripture today. We are living, I believe, right now at the feet. This is where we are, friends, in human history. My Lord, my God, all these centuries have gone by. All the prophets were warning about this entity, the beast, the Antichrist. And we are finally at this level. We are almost at the Ten Kings. And sometimes I wonder, are they already here? But we just haven't recognised them. You understand? Let me close Nebuchadnezzar statue come back to that later let me finish this so this region is rich in reserves of oil natural gas uranium and other critical minerals this is why this region is going to be fought after that alone attracted china's clumsy courtship over the last few decades decades but since the fall of the u.s backed republic in neighboring afghanistan and the return of the Taliban in 2021, the satellite states of the former Soviet Union have become the West's bullock against a resurgence in terrorism and jihad. <clears throat> a resurgence. It never went away. It just took cover for a while, but it resurfaced. Adding China's ambitions for new transshipment routes for Europe for its manufactured output, Beijing's Built and Road Initiative is literally called the New Silk Road, and Turkey's plans to renew historic cultural, linguistic ties for security and trade deals. You see, right now nobody's mentioning the religious ties that bind these cultural linguistic peoples together and that will be the final linchpin i believe that will hold it all together and it's easy to see why all side why all side roads are leading to central asia where's my map where are we what region are we talking about so we are talking central asia we're talking about this region here friends all these peoples rich in reserves let me finish it off Russia's war in Ukraine has soured many Central Asian publics if not their governments on Moscow and many of those restive populations are clamouring for freedoms oh there you go it's asking me to subscribe Oh, that's fine. I'll just move on. But do we understand, friends, that because of the nature of these conflicts, our, our world, the way we see things, it's all Western, isn't it? Because we're living in the West. It's natural for us to be focused on our regional situation, the circumstances that affect us all. But what's going on over there? And the wider region is absolutely shocking. The developments. I had a video up that I was going to share with you. Let me go back to that. This is about Pakistan. Now, this is from uh, Channel 4 News Channel because there's pandemonium kicking over in Pakistan lately. Let me play the video clip. It's only two and a half minutes. 
aside to that they've had earthquakes in Pakistan and Afghanistan so friends the region is shaking and this shaking you remember what the scripture says I will shake all nations all nations will shake everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken recently this has been in the news let me play the clip get it out the way with the posh part of Lahore police pay a dawn visit to the home of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan it's been turned into a fortress the visitors are not welcome police claim they were shot at from the roof they soon emptied the compound slingshot versus bulldozer is no match dozens were arrested but not Imran Khan the cricket star turned political disruptor was in convoy hundreds of miles away on his way to a court hearing in Islamabad he's been charged with 96 counts of selling official ministerial gifts he received when in office Khan was ousted last year in a vote of no confidence and dismisses the charges as a deep state ruse to silence him so he can't run in October's general election. He went to court today anyway. Rule of law I'm going there because I believe in the rule of law, he said, adding, I want to tell the nation that the intention of these thieves, these rulers and their facilitators has been exposed. They've imposed the law of the jungle here. The scenes outside court, another sad chapter in Pakistan's dispiriting cycle of instability. Four bouts of military dictatorship, no PM to ever complete their term, assassination attempts commonplace. Khan himself shot last November. But his leadership too was far from perfect, accused of financial incompetence, political naivety and a crackdown on press freedom. The criticism against Mr Khan is that he's embraced populism, but really it's an empty populism and there's a lack of substance. Well, then who, this, let, even let the people of Pakistan decide that. This, that's why you hold elections. In a democracy, you get... You go to people and ask their decision. So let the, let the elections happen then. But there are going to be elections this year anyway, right? We don't know. The way government is going, we don't, we don't believe they will hold elections, even the national elections, because they are not holding elections in the two largest uh, states uh, or the provinces right now. This is a major problem right now, and Pakistan <laughs> is heading towards a complete collapse, and uh, we fear martial law, frankly. Mr. Khan's court hearing today was in fact postponed till the end of March. He tweeted this footage as he began the long drive back home to Lahore, where his supporters say they will always have his back. Absolutely crazy. Because Imran Khan is, and he said he's got evidence, and I think it's pretty obvious now, that his opponents will have him killed or jailed. And he's predicting that they will try to delay the elections because the peoples want him in and because he's the popular winner the government currently won him out and they'll do anything to do it it's just crazy reminds me a bit of the trump situation here where he made those allegations about the deep state and now they were after him from the get-go it's a similar situation Al Jazeera and other channels reported on the earthquake in Pakistan and Afghanistan. And not only are these regions being affected by earthquakes, friends, they're happening in several locations around the world. So although I want to give you updates about the geopolitical situation and Bible prophecy, I also think it's important that we don't disregard the fact that these earthquakes they're happening more frequently, they're increasing in intensity, and it's likely they'll affect us on this part of the world. So we should be mindful, we should be prepared. There's a lot of rumours and there's um, concern about food shortages as well. So we have to do what we can for the days ahead. If we are people of preparation and people who are wise, we ought to be doing that, right? Not to startle anyone, but just to be realistic at least 13 people have been killed hundreds injured after multi magnitude 6.5 earthquake hit across afghanistan and pakistan with tremors felt as far as the indian capital 
New Delhi. In fact, there's a channel that I, I have actually shared it with you before. If you just look at the current earthquake news. Oil industry, 13 hours ago, oil industry activity likely triggered large Alberta earthquake, fine study. Hmm, in Canada. Multiple earthquake strike near Borrego Springs. Oh my goodness. San Diego. The channel, I want to get all this out of the way with before I move on. This is Dutch Incense channel. I was watching just the intro earlier. This is his most recent one which he posted two days ago. Seismic unrest, 6.5s and 7.7 earthquakes around the planet from Afghanistan to Chile. My goodness, and he's always been accurate with his um, predictions because he, that's his thing, he studies earthquakes. He's been doing it for over a decade. So what was he saying here? Let me just rewind it back. I'll play a little bit. I'm showing you the channel and I'm going to show you some other channels just so I can recommend them to you to show you some of the content that I watch that I keep you up to date with because I find them useful. And so I'm going to share them with you. This is his channel here, Dutch Sense, and I will play from here just a couple of minutes. Side of the plate boundary. Deep earthquakes. Next to them, shallower, larger earthquakes by one magnitude. <laughs> Up to the north, same thing, up in Japan. Deep fours, shallow 5.2s on either side. And then let's talk about this. Japan has been hit multiple times in the past two days. Izu Ridge and a 5.6 up off the northeast coast, south of Hokkaido or just on the northeast side of the North Island or South Island. But right where both sets of rings overlap, right here next to Tokyo. I have a warning going for a few more days, four more days for up to a seven to strike. It hasn't hit yet. It's the halfway point between the two sets of quakes. Oh, that's not all that struck, guys. We also got 4.0 level activity up here, right along the coast of California, up to five it could be. It's at 4.5, USGS 4.5. So that kind of tells you it probably was just a little bit bigger than that, but so coast of California also got hit as well as Alaska, Yukon got hit last night. 4.0 level activity, they downgraded that. We go down to South America, back down past the big earthquake I, I started the update talking about, and South Sandwich, as well as the coast of Chile also hit with multiple fives. Now let's get to Europe, check this out. Even the untrained eye will be able to see this in about two seconds. So these are the earthquakes over the last 48 hours or so from the USGS. Here's our big one. And then we have a spread of fours. Oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at 4.0 and greater earthquakes over the last 48 hours. And it's a stepping stone path of somewhat the same sized earthquakes within a half magnitude of each other all the way across, going to a pinnacle point up here at Switzerland, <laughs> the Swiss-France border and all about 4.5 to 4.9 going across the plate. Now, before we go any further, I want to show you the rest of this wave video. If you're a new viewer, I want you to look at the screen right about here as we have a standing wave forming a tank. When the wave gets down to the end closest to us or to the other end, it reflects back into itself. I'll move on. Remember to check out his channel. I mean, there's something to keep an eye on, you know. Just so we're prepared, you know. Moving on. Muslims have started their fasting season. Uh, was it two days ago? Was it a day ago now? Muslims pray at Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa at the start of Ramadan. Oh, let's just brace ourselves because you know what that means. A potential, likely, probable time of great conflict coming again. You would think it's a time of peace, but uh, it doesn't tend to be that way. Tens of thousands of worshippers attended Friday prayers at Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. Remember I asked you this question, my friends. Who's in control of Jerusalem? Why do I say that? It's to remind us that when we talk about the end times, we've got to look at the, the heart of the end times. The heart of Bible prophecy is 
all the nations surrounding Jerusalem. Jerusalem is center, key, focus of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ because that is where he's returning. Who's in control of the region today? It's certainly not the Jews. It's certainly not the Christians, which then leaves us with the Islamic world. Okay? It's for a reason, friends. Okay? Pray for them. Pray that the blindness will be removed and that they will come to know that, that there's only salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. That they could be free from this violence, from this misery, from this bondage. Tens of thousands of worshippers attended Friday prayers at Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, the first in the holy month of Ramadan. Ho authorities say the prayers at Islam's third holiest site passed peacefully despite concerns over a recent surge in violence in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Oh my goodness, have I got something to share with you? Just bear with me because it's a bit further down. There's something really important I want to share with you because this should be a wake-up call, honestly, to us believers who are just so, I don't know what it is, we've got our heads in the clouds. We just don't see the threat that the beast is going to pose to the rest of the world, especially when I talk about the Islamic Antichrist. But there are still people there obviously dismissing it, irrationalizing it saying well i can see your point but the roman empire this the roman empire that the world economic forum this the united nations that i understand your concern if you have those views but you're missing the point the point of the bible is pointing us to a pacific location now what we need to do is show you let me show you Turkey. Let's get that on the map. <sighs> right. This is the region, my dear friends, that the Word of God warns us about. It warns us that this is the location of the beast. Why do I say that? Well, when we talk about the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, the beast is described as being Babylonian, Greek, Persian. Now, when we look at those elements, let's say the elements of the metals, let me go back to my map. Over here. Come on, over here, Nebi. Okay, so we've got the metals symbolizing the empires with the gold head being Babylon, the silver element, the chest and arms representing the Medes and the Persians and then you've got the bronze element the belly and the thighs region is the Greek and then when we get to the iron and this is where everyone goes a bit crazy no it's the Roman Empire no okay let's say it was the Roman Empire the Roman Empire was divided yes east and west the majority of Bible prophecy is focused on the East. Can we agree? It's not focused on the Western portion of the Roman Empire, is it? It's Jerusalem, Israel focused. Now, there was an empire that came and conquered that region and kicked out the Romans. And that empire was the Islamic Empire. Yes, it was a thing. It still is a thing. The very final element of its empire was the Ottoman Empire. You may have heard about it. Yes. That empire is being revived according to Turkey's visions to revive it. I hope that made sense. That is the region. So Jerusalem, so much to talk about. Israel Jerusalem news now about this fasting season there's obviously an increased security concern because of this season right now even though Israel's had a really difficult time lately it's been very very violent I mean when has it ever seen peace the region even though the Abraham Accords the Abrahamic house 
all these initiatives to somehow bring peace in the region. It's all futile, isn't it? All the efforts are pointless because there's just something about the Palestinians wanting to free the region from the Jews, which makes it a perpetual conflict. Jerusalem security forces on alert as tens of thousands at the first Friday Ramadan prayers. And there's three more to go, or four. Concern over violence as Palestinians prepare for Ramadan. I mean, people are on edge knowing that now's this month of fasting's here. Oh my goodness, we do not want to upset the Muslims, do we? We don't want to get them upset because all hell will break loose. What can we do? This is why I say the Islamic Empire, when it conquered the Middle East, North Africa, Jerusalem, Israel, it still left its mark in the region. The Roman Empire is long gone. The Greeks are long gone. But the influence of the Babylonians, the Medo-Persians is still present because today Islam covers all those regions today. Yes, we can agree. It's not the Romans that have influence over there. It's Islam. Why a peaceful... Check this title out. I mean, my goodness. Why peaceful Ramadan in East Jerusalem depends on luck, composure and good Israeli judgment. Oh my goodness. Appeasement, right? Bonkers. Barmy. Jerusalem security forces on alert. Okay. Same thing going on. Activists offered to pay Arabs to store Pasha Lam's near Temple Mount. Something more to ignite more conflict. Israel police to secure Muslim worshippers. Check this out. The Israeli police are securing Muslim worshippers on the first Friday of Ramadan. <laughs> but Israel is an apartheid state, did you know? There's something else about this region that I'm sure you've heard about. That I think it's worth me covering, even though there's not much I want to say about it, because I think it's just unlikely it's going to happen. Despite Prime Minister's assurances, Christian Zionists be bedeviled by anti-missionary bill. So there's an anti-missionary bill proposed by the far-right extreme groups in Israel that would ban preaching the gospel, trying to ban converting Jews to Christianity. Let's read a little bit of this just to satisfy those who are concerned and you might have heard about it and what does this mean? A bill making religious proselytization punishable by jail time induced alarm among Christian Zionists in Israel and around the world despite assurances by government officials that it would not become law. You know Benjamin Netanyahu, he has a lot of friends in the Christian world, right? It's unlikely that this bill would get any recognition but it's been proposed nevertheless the proposal submitted by the united torah judaism's moshe gaffney claims that missionary groups mainly christians have stepped up efforts to convert people in israel hallelujah <laughs> praise the lord because the times are coming to the point where we know the return of the lord is near so the preaching of the gospel becomes more eminent, yes? The language of the bill would make soliciting an adult to change his faith punishable by one year in jail. The penalty would increase to two years if the individual being solicited was a minor. I won't play that. The bill which Gaffney submits at the start of every Knesset and seemingly has no expectation of advancing, no expectation of advancing, was submitted on January the 9th, but only made waves when it was picked up in recent days. And this was, this part of this article really just made me chuckle a little bit. Because I'm like, oh, here we go. It was only picked up and become a news because of Christian media. The Trinity Broadcasting Network's Joel Rosenberg, a Messianic Jew, first broke the story last week. <laughs> It was then picked up Tuesday by Newsmax, oh my goodness, a right-wing American outlet that reaches tens of millions of viewers. So from there, it spread all over, right, this hysteria. 
On Wednesday morning, the Foreign Ministry began receiving calls from... <laughs> just in a few days. By Wednesday, the Foreign Minister in Israel began receiving calls from heads of parliamentary friendship groups, diplomats, Christian Zionist leaders and Jewish leaders around the world, an Israeli diplomat said. Foreign Ministry staff prepared reports on the fallout of the bill for Foreign Minister Eli and Director General Ronan, the diplomat said on condition of anonymity. I said the word wrong. Prime Minister Netanyahu got involved late Wednesday, tweeting in Hebrew and in English, we will not advance any law against the Christian community. So that settles it, right? We appreciate the assurance from Prime Minister Netanyahu that the proposed anti-missionary bill will not go forward and thank him for speedily putting this matter to rest. He has done much over his long political career to strengthen and guard Israel's relations with Christians worldwide. It brings in a lot of tourism, a lot of tourist money and our embrace of this nation is warmly returned. So... There's a photo of thousands of Christian pilgrims attend the Feast of Tabernacles. This photo was taken in uh, 2017. I was going to say, but that's not now. That's in the fall. Christian Zionists form a vital and growing block, yes, of support for Israel around the world. Their efforts have changed country stances on Israel, have brought massive amounts of money and tourists into the country and have funded Jewish immigration humanitarian projects within Israel and there's Netanyahu's tweet we will not advance any law against the Christian community just to settle the argument the concern okay moving on I should probably close the tags as I go because they get very distracting to me Israel should not worry about the Saudi Iranian deal now when this happened that was one of the first things I thought of. Is the US and Israel going to be very worried that Saudi Arabia is bypassing the US and Israel and going to just reach out to Iran and come to some sort of deal? I probably think they should be concerned. But because we know the scriptures, friends, we know that even though it looks like they're going to come to some agreement, I believe they will, there is a level of treachery involved. And the Bible in three scriptures speaks of treachery. And I believe this is all in relation to the harlot, which I believe is in Saudi Arabia, Babylon the Great. When Saudi Arabia realised that relations with the US were not improving, it became relevant in the eyes of of the rival to America, China. And that's really the story. The agreement signed between Saudi Arabia and Iran, mediated by China, grabbed international headlines last week. While in other countries the event received headlines as a regular news report in Israel, this news was received differently, in a manner that may be understandable, only contrary to common perception. Israel has nothing to worry about. Because Israel has got its own relationship with Saudi Arabia and I believe that relationship is going to grow more stronger, more prosperous. Because sadly, unfortunately, Israel is going to be looking to make more alliances with the Arabs in the south because those Islamic nations are more open to working together with Israel, even though Israel is still appeasing them because of the Palestinian situation, right? Israel has nothing to worry about. The struggle between Israel and Iran is no secret as is Iran's desire to see Israel destroyed. This is a long-term conflict that also includes other countries as a part of a struggle for values and worldviews. However, contrary to what many might assume, the agreement between Saudi Arabia and Iran does not mean much in relation to the struggle between Israel and Iran. It is true that Israel looks at any such political agreements through the prism of the conflict with Iran and its interest therein. This is understandable because it is seen as an existential conflict.
Moving on to other news. On this particular website, memory.org, you know, I just... <sighs> You know, we read these scriptures, friends. What scriptures? I'll go there in a moment. Stay with me. You've got to stay because that will be the most important part of this video. When we read them and then we see things happening in the world and we just know the word of God is so accurate because we see the climate. Naturally, things are going to gravitate in this direction, aren't they? Naturally, it's going to happen, right? He puts kings in place and he can remove them according to his purposes. On Memory, which is a, an organisation that translates all the media in the Middle East that is published in Arabic and they translate it or they give you the English version, which is more understandable for the Western audiences, of what is really going on. There's so much on their website, but there's a couple of things I wanted to show you. Let me go. If you just see some of the headlines here. So these are their most recent updates. Why are we even bothered with this website? Well, I'll tell you why. Because these regions, friends, let's go back to our map. It's not reset itself again, is it? Okay. This region, friends, is going to see the rise of the Antichrist beast this region not over here it is if you're looking here if this is the direction that you're looking at or where your teachers and the books that you're reading are telling you to focus you're missing the mark completely we will have our own problems here guaranteed our own troubles but this is not the focus of the bibles in regarding the end times you're in the opposite direction. It's over here, where he, it has always been the focus. This region has always been the primary focus of the Bible, and it's never going to change. This is the location. Now, let's zoom in some more closer. Here you go. So this region here, Israel, obviously, secular state even though it wants to say it's a jewish state which i disagree with wholeheartedly even though i agree to some extent it has a right to consider itself a jewish state why but well we've got so many islamic states why can't there be a jewish state <clears throat> it has a threat on several levels from the north from the east from the south from the west not so much from the west but definitely to its southern border and up to its northern border. A lot of trouble, a big threat is facing on all levels, right? In the future, that threat will grow. Because what Israel doesn't know, the Bible has already declared. Nations such as Libya and Sudan will also be on this invasion of the region in alignment with the Gog nations led by Turkey and Medo-Persia, which includes Azerbaijan and Iran, possibly Afghanistan and Pakistan. That would be your Medo-Persian region, together with Turkey and the Turks up here, the Turkic peoples, which are a vast number of people. A huge army, which is what the word of God tells us in Ezekiel. It's going to be a big coalition. So it's important that we can hear a little bit of something what is coming out from these regions, especially the extreme, the extremist groups, Hezbollah, these Islamic scholars who are giving out their preaching sessions, Hamas. In fact, there's one channel. Let me just go there now. There's one channel that I want to share with you. Here you go. Let me play this channel. This is taken from the Israel Guys. Another channel I highly recommend you subscribe to. These guys, the Israel Guys, are living in Israel. They're Americans, they're living there, they're putting out content, what is going on, what's really happening in the land, and they put out news. Now, 
let me play this clip you would be you'd be shocked to see this but it does not surprise me but for some of you this will be a shock okay the land and people of israel guys thank you so much for joining us on the show once again if you like this content don't hesitate to subscribe hit the like button and also leave us a comment below to get engaged in the conversation today i want to um go through a couple of videos that have been brought to light from private Arab chat groups uh, by an organization called Memre. They specialize in monitoring Arab TV stations in Arabic and also private chat groups now um, and translating those with English subtitles for Western audiences. Uh, because unfortunately, throughout the years, we've seen a number of times you have leaders inside of Arab culture and inside of Judea and Samaria and also other Arab states who say one thing out of out of one side of their mouth in Arabic to Ar to Arab speaking audience and then they turn around and say the complete opposite to a Western audience. Uh, this is a problem that's been very pervasive throughout the years and Memory has been doing a good job of combating that by bringing what they actually say in Arabic to Western audiences. So I'm going to start with this video over here um, that they posted to their Twitter page and this is from a private telegram group inside of Arab neighborhoods. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is to let you know that this Islamic beast that we talk about on this channel and other channels, not many, I'll show you which channels to subscribe to, who are also sharing Bible prophecy with this mindset, with this understanding, let's say. The reason why it's important to share this with you is so you understand what it will look like when the beast arises. The beast system is comprised of the system of Islam. The engine, the components, everything that the beast requires in order to become that 42 month, three and a half year beast, because that would be the season that it will be allowed to persecute the saints. For those three and a half years for 42 months is a system a military system it's warfare this is why the doctrination indoctrination the mind control of islam plays a key role which also connects saudi arabia to the beast so you have the um, the harlot and the beast connected she controls the beast does this make sense to you? Okay. Let me continue to play this. And it was very loud. Let me just turn it down a notch. Right, here you go. Shocking what he's going to show you. Probably from inside of Nablus, Shechem, Biblical Shechem, um, or, or Ramallah or Janin. So... He's saying on the Telegram channel, which I, I use Telegram, but my channel is not that popular. <laughs> I'm on Telegram, you guys. You can find me there if you want to come in. I All I do on there is that I share my videos. And that's about it, really. Um, If there was more people on there, I would share more. Anyhow, what he's saying is on Telegram, there's this thread going around and it's sending this this particular video that he is sharing right now. This video has been spread on the Telegram channel and it is promoting warfare. It's teaching Palestinians how to fight and not just like your average Joe, how to defend yourself. No, this is like guerrilla warfare training, basically. This is what's been shared. And the propaganda, you know, the footages of the women and the children being killed and hurt to rally up support, to really ignite fervor amongst the Palestinians or whoever's watching it to go and take up arms to fight back against the Zionist entity, Israel, is very effective. This is how propaganda works. But to this, to this amount is shocking. To this extent, let me play. And you can see as I, I play through the video, um, they show terrorists 
scouting out places to kill Jews and show how to do it, how to how to work undercover. Then they show, you know, how to use your weapon, how to how to sneak up on on innocent Jews sitting in a coffee shop and shoot them in the back of the head. I, I'm gonna kind of blur some of this out because even though it's it's not graphic, it's a simulation. YouTube will probably censor us on this. Um, and also, it's disturbing. And then, and then they show how you know if you have a if you have a gun jam, how to you know take a knife and murder the person straight out. And then in the second video they posted, um, it gives instructions as to after you commit the terrorist attack, if you get caught in a firefight with the military, um, here's the best way to use your car. Think about it. You've got majority. I mean, the majority of Bible prophecy land all believing that the revival of the Roman Empire will produce the beast. Meanwhile, this is going on. This is why it's going to take the world by surprise, isn't it, friends? It's not Islam. You're being racist. You're scapegoating a people who don't mean no harm. They've just been taken over by a handful of radicals, really. Okay. As a shield, you know, the places to hide behind. And then in this third video, in the same thread, they um, give this simulated experience of Jewish youth <clears throat> going through an Arab town, I guess, like breaking windows and and um, tipping over trash cans. And they show how, you know, if something like this is happening, here's how you can set an ambush and butcher everyone in the process. Unfortunately, this is the state of Arab media. This is not the first time we've seen something like this. It happens over and over and over again. Just on the show a little while ago, we discussed a couple of weeks back, we, we went through a video of a kindergarten inside of Judea and Samaria where the, where the young kids are being taught how to be terrorists, how to ambush Jews, how to slaughter them, and, and being shown this glory of this is what happens you know, after you slaughter Jews and become a martyr. And, uh, you know, this is what will happen to you after that, after that happens. And it's really sad. It really is really sad. And it's no wonder so many terrorist attacks happen, you know, inside of Judea and Samaria when this is being pushed in the media so much. And here in just a second, we are going to kind of do a breakdown as to what's the draw? Why, why is there this age old push in between, you know, Arabs and Jews, the Arabs feel like they have to murder Jews and have this, this push generation to generation to generation to murder Jewish civilians. We're going to, um, the beast. That's why it's the antichrist the beast system. This is why I'm saying when I was showing you the graph of, um, Nebuchadnezzar's statue, this is why I'm saying we are ready at the final stages friends we are literally just waiting for the man of sin to be revealed because the, the system is here already the followers are here when the scripture says an army shall be given over to him the army is here they're just not organized they're disorganized they're divided again very scriptural that's exactly how the scripture describes it let me close that so that was that channel the other channel i wanted to recommend was kingdom covenant who's also talking about this um jericho i was on there some time ago I did that video gog and magog um let's see if there was anything latest so this is his channel give him some support there's only a young kid working for the lord right now friends trying to serve him best he can he understands the threat another channel that i recommend i'm just going to get this section out of the way with 
is Jews for Jesus so you know that the Lord is already working among his people this isn't just about all the Jews rejected him that's why they're gonna suffer the consequences of the tribulation no 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 the church started with the Jews and it's still continuing to grow today this is a wonderful channel so you can be encouraged to hear all these testimonies of how the Jews found the Messiah Jesus Christ so it's a great channel check that out also let me close that down another channel a young brother in the Lord glorified message he's only just starting out <clears throat> He's only just begun begun putting out videos. This was his one six days ago. The best candidate for the Antichrist, who is the Mahdi. And we need the younger generation to start spreading the word, friends, just so that more people can be saved, come to the knowledge of the truth, come to repentance, and to understand the times that we're living in. Now's the time. Please support them. I'd really appreciate it. And also, One for Israel Ministry. You might have heard of it before. <clears throat> Full of testimonies of Jews coming to faith in Jesus Christ. So we know the times of the Lord's return are coming closer. Look, even Jonathan Khan's there. Look at that. <laughs> I made a deal with God and almost died. I have to check that one out myself. Anyway, let's get back to where I was. Which was, where was I, friends? Okay, getting back to some of this news. Some of it's not even important. Now, when I think about it, I'm like, why am I even going to all these news clips? Because it takes away the time. There are some things that are really important <clears throat> to understand because we see how close we are. Syria, as Assad says, he won't meet other one until a Turkey ends this occupation. So for some time now, <clears throat> I've been anticipating Syria and Turkey resolving their differences. And when that time comes, we're very close to the formation of the beast. Remember, there's 10 kings that have to unite who give their power to the beast. Why Syria? Well, because the Euphrates is a river <clears throat> that starts here. The head of the river Euphrates starts in Turkey, northeast Turkey, comes down, cuts through Syria and goes right through to Iraq. And we know through the word of God that when this river drives, dries up, then the way for the kings of the east will be prepared. All these kings, yes, or the Islamic peoples, as far as Pakistan. A vast army coming <clears throat> so we look forward to I mean we look to these nations to see what is happening here we're certainly not looking forward to the time of the beast but to the return of the Lord Jesus so that's why I bring up these news clips Saudi Arabia and Syria you know Saudi Arabia is just playing a very cunning game right now there's also this war that is still unresolved. A new war between Armenia and Azerbaijan. But also there's fears of war breaking out between Iran and Azerbaijan, which is most likely to happen this year. I hope I'm wrong. <clears throat> Saudi Arabia is asking the US to give its security guarantees, right? The USA is a bit reluctant. Blinken, Saudi Iran reapproachment does not in any way substitute the US push to expand Abraham Accords. Because they started this, they want to complete it. They want to get the prize, and the prize is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia needs to be signatory to the Abraham Accords. <clears throat> I believe it will happen. But there's going to be a compromise, friends. <clears throat> there will be a compromise. I want to get to the word of God. Arab plan for Syria puts US and Europe in a bind. I'll just give you the headlines. A push by Arab allies of the US to bring Syria in from the cold highlights the limits of a Chinese mediated rapprochement between the Middle East arch rivals Saudi Arabia and Iran. 
Saudi Arabia and Iran. You know, they're mentioned in the Word of God, friends. And I believe Saudi Arabia is where Babylon the Great is. Making sense of Iran's de-escalation with Saudi Arabia. Well, if we want to make sense of it, we'll go no further than the Word of God. And all these other opinion polls are written that no, there's nothing to worry about. <clears throat> Article that I was going to share with you, but when I think about how much it is I have to get through, some of it is not important anymore. Remember I shared with you about the Abrahamic house in UAE opened up, didn't it? Not long ago. Well, this was just an article talking about, really, they're using tourism, I mean, using the word tolerance to attract tourism, which is a no-brainer because they're developing the peninsula with a lot of money, a lot of development. Iraq is asking Turkey to increase the water flow in Euphrates. So Turkey controls the flow of the Remember I showed you the riverhead is in Turkey. So it begins there and it flows south. The region of Iraq has suffered greatly because of this. And they're saying Turkey has manipulated the water control, the supply. And so that is still going on. But we know it's going to completely dry up eventually. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about, which I might have to save for another time because it ties in to the mark of the beast you may have seen my playlist on the mark of the beast if you haven't i have a playlist i have so many playlists <laughs> there's a playlist i have on the mark of the beast and i spoke about this islamic finance islamic banking sharia finance and how believed that will be involved in the mark of the beast. Because this is an Islamic Sharia based. Which means you have to be submitted to Islam in order to buy and sell. So there's all this talk now in crypto world. In the financial world about this coin. Islamic coin brings a UAE royalty into cryptocurrencies <clears throat> you know i could do a separate video on that i think i may do that i'll do that just so you know that there is such a thing now it's being formed right now in fact there is a video that i found on their actual website islamiccoin.net you can go there i will play the video it's a short video and it basically explains exactly what they are planning on doing. Here we go. Oh, so okay. So Islam this is, is the world's second largest religion with almost two billion followers, a quarter of the world's population. Muslims make up a majority of the population in 47 countries. Islam teaches that God is merciful, all-powerful, and unique. Islamic law, or Sharia law, is a religious law for... You see that picture there? Look at that. So this is Mecca, in Saudi Arabia. This is their clock tower. It is huge. I did videos on that. I showed you how big it was and everything. These are older videos of mine. I covered this stuff in great detail. You'll have to check them out. I believe it's in my playlist called The Antichrist and Mystery Babylon playlist. Anyway, I'll continue playing. This is their promotional video. Part of the Islamic tradition. It guides many of the aspects of the followers of Islam's lives, including financial interactions. One of the core principles of Islamic financial law is the prohibition of paying or charging interest. However, if we look closely at modern legal tender, or fiat money, we will notice that they are being issued by central banks and lent out to commercial banks with interest at a rate determined by the central banks themselves. Fiduciary money is designed to be easily manipulated by central banks and governments by the means of controlling supply via control of the interest rate. So, by design, today's fiduciary money is not fully compliant with Sharia. 
However, new technologies such as the blockchain enable new value exchange systems that are decentralized, fair, and immutable. We proudly present to the world Islamic coin. You see, so I was keeping an eye out on when this thing would appear. For a while now, the Islamic nations have been moving toward unifying the nations in order to stop their um, reliability, their dependability on the US petrodollar. They need to move away from the petrodollar. So they need an Islamic coin in order to really be a caliph, a caliphate. Because you can't have a caliphate without currency. And that currency needs to be Islamic, Sharia, Islamic finance based currency. So this is just the beginning, friends. And I believe this is going to play a huge role in the mark of the beast. You see, these things take time. They don't happen overnight. Islamic coin is the halal crypto asset designed to create value for the Muslim community worldwide. It is built on the dedicated Islamic blockchain called Hakchain and carefully follows the Islamic view on finance. Islamic coin cannot be arbitrarily printed and thus devalued. It also can't be arbitrarily deflated through a rise of the central bank's interest rate. Its price is determined solely by the market and thus always fair. Islamic coin may only be minted or issued by those who contribute work and investment as validators of the network at a predetermined announced rate. Unlike fiduciary money, Islamic coin is not operated by the banks whose main business is to earn money by charging interest. Charging interest is what leads to riba and is therefore forbidden. Each time a new Islamic coin is minted, 10% of the issued amount is deposited into a special evergreen fund for further investment into Islamic internet projects or given to Islamic charities. This is the first introduction of a coin bringing direct economic value to a community. The Evergreen Fund is a non-profit foundation focused on long-term sustainability and community impact. It effectively works as a crypto endowment. Key decisions are made by the consensus of validators on the Hawk blockchain. Our mission is to empower the international community of the followers of Islam with a financial and technological tool that allows for independent financial interaction while supporting technological evolution and philanthropy. With an estimated 25 million users, Bitcoin's market cap is just 10% shy of 1 trillion. This is, this is shocking figures. Did you catch that? Let me go back and repeat that, just in case your mind went blank there for a minute. Okay. Let me take it back a little more. Okay. 25 million users, Bitcoin's market cap is just 10% shy of 1 trillion. Leveraging the power of community, Islamic coin may surpass Bitcoin as the world's dominating crypto asset by engaging just a fraction of the online Muslim community. Wow. <clears throat> An ideology backed crypto asset is the next big thing. Islamic coins potential is far greater than those of existing crypto assets because of the power of community. They have strength in numbers. This is a numbers game. So without giving it two thoughts, Muslims will prioritize the Islamic coin over Bitcoin any day of the week. You see, they've got power in numbers in the community because this is a part of their um, way of life, right? Islamic coin potential is far greater than those of existing crypto assets because of the power of community. We shall see, right? We shall see <clears throat> what happens. It could be another coin that comes out and it's been re reviewed or revised influence of the Ottoman Empire continues to be felt in one way or another in Turkey you know because they're coming to that mark this summer of the hundred years so this is what this article is about this year marks 
the 100th centenary of both the fall of the Ottoman Empire and the birth of the state of modern Turkey, officially the Republic of Turkey now. The fall of the Ottoman Empire, so this is an Islamic-based article, the fall of the Ottoman Empire is probably the greatest catastrophe that befell the Islamic world since the Mongol and Crusade invasions. Yeah, there was wars between the Ottomans and the Crusaders. Yes, I have spoken about that in my older videos. It shattered the unity of Muslims and I believe this is when the wound of the, one of the heads took place. I'm coming to those scriptures. Let me just go there now. I'll read a little bit more so you know why I brought this up. <clears throat> Founded in 1299, the Ottoman Empire over the course of the next six centuries expanded across a vast realm encompassing southeastern Europe, North and East Africa, Western Asia and the Caucasus. As it's, at its height, the empire included the areas of Turkey, Egypt, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, Macedonia, Hungary, Palestine included occupied lands, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria and parts of the Arabian Peninsula. This is all after the Roman Empire and parts of the Arabian Peninsula. I wanted to do a video on that about the wars between the Ottomans and the Sauds. They had a big conflict and it's not resolved and North Africa. It eventually became one of the largest, most powerful, long-lasting empires in the history of the world. The Ottoman Empire began to decline in the 18th century and after World War I, it collapsed, leading to the establishment of the modern Republic of Turkey in 1923 and to the creation of other new states in the Middle East. And I believe this was the head wound. The head wound. <clears throat> we'll read this in Revelation chapter 13 I was going to begin in Revelation 17 but let me just clarify to you where it says that in Revelation 13 then I stood in the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea this sea is no other than the Mediterranean that is the sea having seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns because this at this stage this is when they've been given the power the authority to rule with the beast and on his heads a blasphemous name now the beast which i saw was like a leopard so this blasphemous name is connected to islam which is blatant blasphemy now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne and great authority. Those temptations that the serpent, the dragon, tempted our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ with are the same temptations that he visits the man of sin with. And the man of sin receives the temptations and says, yes, please. And I saw... One of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marvelled and followed the beast. One of his heads had been mortally wounded. Now I'm going to have to take out the map to show you one of those heads because there were seven, seven heads, yes? Map, please. Here we go. So, what were the seven heads? I believe they were and are as follows. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome. The designer of this graphic has written five are fallen from Revelation 17 and those fallen ones at the time of Rome which was the one that was currently still in existence at the time of John's revelation previous to him 
to Rome were Greece, the Medo-Persian, Babylon, Assyria, Egypt. They had fallen. One is, the other is not yet come, and when he comes, he must continue a short space. Continue a short space. And the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven. Now, when we come to the wording of this, I consider it both ways and is of the seven. It could be he belongs to one of these seven or it could be read as is of the seven. And I believe that was the interpretation. You can agree, you can disagree. <clears throat> I've always said I believe it's the seventh one, which is the Islamic that was wounded, was given a deadly wound, but there's a reason why it was a deadly wound it wasn't completely killed off and today there's only one empire if you look at all of them egyptian anyone talking about reviving the egyptian empire what about the assyrian empire the babylonian empire medo-persian greece roman empire we heard about it a little bit in the in the news Recently, it was mentioned as a, you know, an ideal, it would be wonderful to revive it. But most of the time we hear it in Bible prophecy land, that this is the one that is coming back. But there's no particular geopolitical influence that Rome has over the nations. The Roman Empire. You see, people mix that with the EU and the Vatican, which are two separate things. But there is talk of reviving the Islamic Empire. In fact, that is a primary goal, like a priority of the Islamic world to bring back the Khilafah. I'm an ex-Muslim. I would hear about this all the time, <clears throat> in circles, in the media, in the news. In the community, we need the revival of the Khilafah, the one man to lead everybody else. In fact, Turkey is the nation today, Erdogan in particular, that talks about it openly. There's articles written about it, reports reported about it. He has neo-Ottoman dreams. It's no secret. It's out in the open. Is it a coincidence? I don't think so, friends. I believe that the revival of this beast, which is Islamic first and then Turkic, would encompass all the former regions. And Islam is the woman that controls it, even though I believe it's in Arabia which is the house, the home or the house of Islam. So, you see, we've got this connection with the Islamic world, those nations who believe that the only way to unite them together is to literally move away from dependency on the US dollar, to move away from the Western ways of doing things and we do our own thing, like Babylon, of old we will unite we will unite everybody under the banner of islam islam also has the end time prophecies that speak about this one man who is coming to lead them he's called the mahdi and the second man that's coming is the false prophet jesus because in islam the jesus that they talk about is not the same jesus that we, you and i believe in this is the false prophet in the book of Revelation, there are two beasts, friends. Come on. Satan has conspired this whole thing in order to challenge the Lord Jesus Christ when he returns. So when we read in Revelation 17, the connection between the scarlet woman and the scarlet beast, it's no wonder today that John was taken 
away in the spirit into the wilderness, a desert. And there he sees the woman sitting. And that woman is in Arabia. I'm not the only one who says this. I have been saying this a long time. There are others who are seeing this also. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy. How we overlook these words. This is a big clue. Key information. Blasphemy. <clears throat> is a part of the nature of the beast. But she is also blasphemous. She's the harlot. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, sign of royalty, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, wealth, abundance, wealth in abundance, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations. There is a spiritual aspect and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written. Mystery, not yet revealed. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. You see, this system that controls the kings of the earth, she is drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Martyrdom. And when I saw her, marvel to great amazement. Why do you marvel? The angel says to John. I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not, and will ascend out to the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. So she has control over the mountains, those heads. They go together. The heads are mountains where the woman is sitting. So she's residing over these former regions. You see, empires, regions, kingdoms, people groups. There are also seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. So there's a short season, because when we read in Revelation chapter 12, we know the time that the dragon has to do his thing. Revelation chapter 12, let's read this bit here. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Obviously, the child is Jesus Christ. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. I believe this is the same wilderness that Israel will return to when Israel, the children of Israel, left Egypt and the Lord led them to this place in the wilderness. That wilderness place is in Arabia. <coughs> <coughs> oh. excuse me so this war breaks out in heaven which is i believe this whole account is showing us past present and future so the dragon is cast out yes <clears throat> therefore rejoice O oh heavens and you who dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil, I'm tired of talking, <laughs> for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. He 
You see, although it would be a terrible time, the Lord Jesus promised that he will shorten those days, yes, for the sake of the elect. The shortening of those days, I believe, is the same timeline. Is these days, the short time. The dragon seas has been cast to the earth. He persecuted the woman who gave birth <clears throat> to the male child, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. The great wings of an eagle, same language as in the times of the Exodus. If you read, the Lord delivered Israel by the wings of a great eagle <laughs> into the wilderness where she is nourished. So this connection that Israel has with Saudi Arabia, it has to be this way. Is for this time, friends. You see, the Lord is preparing the wilderness for Israel, which makes sense that Israel and Saudi Arabia make some kind of agreement to work together for the future. Tourism, trade, peace, security, prosperity, whatever it is, is the excuse. The Lord is in control. He's going to bring Israel back to the same place. I have a video just on that subject alone, on the wilderness, Israel back in the wilderness. So she's nourished there for a time, times and half a time, which brings us back to the three and a half years again, <clears throat> which is the duration of the beast and the duration of the great tribulation from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman. I believe he's going to send an army after her, of the flood of humanity. Men, foot soldiers, whatever you would call them, the Palestinians, whatever. The mouth like a flood after the woman. It's not literally going to be the water coming up. That he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ you see <clears throat> also one moment going back to i think it's in revelation 18 The judgment of Babylon comes. <clears throat> and in Revelation, the next chapter, chapter 19. <clears throat> let me find that scripture. The Lord Jesus returns. These will hate the harlot. <clears throat> Is it 17? I believe it's in 17. Yes, so the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings of the beast. These are of one mind and they will give their power because they make war against Jesus. What system in the world today is already preparing its followers <clears throat> for fighting against Jesus? I propose to you that system today is Islam because in their end time eschatology teachings they believe that this Jewish Messiah figure who they think is Antichrist, they call Dajjal, is going to come and the Islamic Jesus, who the Bible says is the false prophet, will make war against him. These are of one mind, <clears throat> and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful, you see. They declare war against Jesus and the harlot. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits. Where is she sitting? 
These are the mountains. This is where she has the most influence. She's sitting over these regions. Are peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. But she was in control of the beast, right? The beast will turn on her. In our book of Obadiah, so we see that the Lord has revealed to us that there's going to be treachery involved. So what am I saying? Even though Saudi Arabia is making these deals with, let's say, with Syria, with Iran, and it looks like, oh, peace in our times, there will be a turning around. Because these nations, if those are the nations that form the ten kings, will betray her. Thus is the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let us rise up against her for battle. So these nations will arise up against her. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You will be greatly despised. I believe this is referring to Babylon the Great. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Oh, take a breath. <clears throat> though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down says the Lord. Picture that clock tower in Mecca, that tall clock tower with the crescent moon. Though you build your nests amongst the stars, from there I will bring you down. This is Babylon. In Babylon, the Tower of Babel, the ambition that they had was to reach the heavens. And so Babylon the Great is doing the same thing. If these had come to you, robbers by night, or how you would be cut off? Would they not have stolen to their denoff? Or how Esau shall be searched out? How his hidden treasures shall be sought after? You see, it will come down to what will become between Jacob and Esau. These are the two mountains. There's two mountains, Jacob and Esau, and there's two women in the book of Revelation. There's the bride of Christ and there's the harlot. There's Jacob and there's Esau. One is the beloved, beloved of the Lord and the other is hated. <clears throat> How this, his hidden treasures shall be sought after. All the men in your confederacy shall force you to the border. The men at peace with you, Iran, Syria, Turkey, shall deceive you and prevail against you. Those who eat your bread shall lay a trap for you. No one is aware of it. I guarantee you, friends, if the word of God has said it, it's going to happen. When these leaders get together, what do you think they discuss in their meetings? <clears throat> Behind closed doors. Will I not in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men from Edom? An understanding from the mountains of Esau, then your mighty men, O Timan, shall be dismayed, to the end that every one from the mountains of Esau may be cut off by slaughter, because it goes back to the ancient hatred, because of Jacob, for violence against your brother Jacob. And we also read in Isaiah 21, I've read these scriptures in their entirety in their full context in several videos before. I'm just moving along swiftly now. This is also mentioned in Isaiah chapter 21. So we are on our third scripture now, in the third book, where there is this treachery spoken of, this sudden turn of events. There was a season of peace, but then something happened where she was betrayed. The fall of Babylon proclaimed, a burden against the wilderness of the sea, which perfectly describes the harlot. 
John was taken to the wilderness where he saw the woman and she also sits by the seas and over the mountains but she's in a desert Saudi Arabia a desert surrounded by many waters as whirlwinds in the south pass through so it comes from the desert from a terrible land a distressing vision is declared to me the treacherous here we go the treacherous dealer deals treacherously and the plunderer plunders go up O Elam so there's a, a declaration made go up O Elam besiege O Medea Azerbaijan hmm huh you know I was just reading the news report about conflict between Azerbaijan and Iran. I wonder what will become out of this conflict will be the result that they will unite an element of Elam and an element of media. Azerbaijan was in this former region. <clears throat> All its sighing I have made to cease. Therefore, my loins are filled with pain. Pangs are taking hold of me. So this is very distressing vision. I was distressed when I heard it. I was dismayed when I saw it. My heart wavered. Fearfulness frightened me. The night for which I longed, he turned into fear for me. Prepare the table. Set a watchman in the tower. And so this distressing vision is detailed here. And then is written the words. We read it in the book of Revelation, but this is where it was first mentioned. So the connection again is made with Isaiah 21 and the harlot, Babylon the Great. Then he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the carved images of her gods he has broken to the ground. O oh, my threshing and the grain of my floor, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have declared against you. And all this... Destruction is proclaimed again, Duma, which is in Arabia. And if that wasn't enough, the Lord just names it Arabia. Arabia, Dedanites, Timah. This is all in Arabia. Kida, Arabia. You have to read these in their entirety. And then we read in the book of Daniel, in Daniel, which is focusing on the beast. I mean, Daniel chapter 7, this is where I was, because in both chapters of Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, we come to the fourth element. The fourth one is the beast. You see, so the vision is given. He sees these beasts that are stirring. And then he wants to know about the fourth beast which was different from the others. And Islam is different from the others before it. Islam is different because Islam is a system that incorporates everything else in the former empires and more, which is Islam. Islam is the spiritual indoctrination that controls every aspect of a Muslim's life. But you see, Islam would not be Islam if it wasn't for Arabia because that's where it began and that is the harlot that has control over these kings. I pray that this is making sense to you. Daniel wants to know the truth about the fourth beast which was different from all others, exceedingly dreadful. With his teeth of iron and his nails of bronze, which he devoured, broke in pieces and trampled the residue with his feet, and the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, before which three fell, namely, that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. Interesting words. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them how long would this go on where he makes war against the saints like it says in revelation until the ancient of days came that's how long it will continue 
So from the moment the tribulation starts, it will be three and a half years, 42 months. And then the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favour of the saints of the Most High. What is the kingdom that is being attacked? The kingdom of Christ, but also the kingdom of Israel. That's why Jerusalem wants the Islamic world to set up their kingdom, the Khilafa, the Caliphate. They want to claim Jerusalem. There's no other system today that wants Jerusalem to make it their future capital. I know people talk about the Noahide laws. I've done a whole playlist on that as well. Yes, I've done my homework. I do my homework, you guys. <laughs> you need to go back because I'm going to be revisiting that subject matter. The Noahide laws. I'm going to revisit it and that is going to be a very, very important video of mine. But it's in my playlist section. Please go and check it. The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth. Like Daniel chapter 2, the iron feet and clay feet of toes and iron. The fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. <clears throat> Trample it, break it in pieces. This is a violent empire, violent. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom. And another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. Who could those three kings be? Iraq, Syria, Lebanon? Possibly. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. Well, what kind of system is available today in the region that has a different calendar a different sets of laws a different sets of times islamic sharia law the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time the same pattern three and a half years but the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever then the kingdom and dominion the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. <coughs> His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve him and obey him. This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me. My countenance changed. But I kept the matter in my heart. <laughs> oh, Daniel. <sighs> this is the region, friends. It's all going to go down here. You see? So while the West and Europe and everything else is going to be bombarded with Lord knows what. Food shortages. Pandemics internal civil war conflicts maybe natural disasters friends it doesn't take a lot to bring a nation on its knees when the lord wants to shake nations he knows how to shake nations we you and i need to be strong and be ready for those days ahead because the people around about us are going to be looking for answers and we need to be ready to give them answers about what is going on Okay, friends, so this Free Palestine campaign, now do you understand why they are so zealous to liberate old goods, to liberate Palestine, to free it? Do you understand now the spiritual significance of what's happening? It makes sense now, doesn't it? And there will be no end to it, friends. Was Hezbollah behind the Megiddo bombing in Israel? If yes, it's a new escalation. Israel's got enemies on all sides, friends, and they're all Islamic. <clears throat> this was in South Africa. 
a student body had a sort of campaign meeting and in that meeting the conference they welcomed speakers from Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad you see so these people are indoctrinating the youth world over while prophecy land <clears throat> I got the heads in the clouds I'm sorry to say I said it Fears arise of conflict between Iran and Azerbaijan. If these are the Ilam and the media, then something will come out of it. Azerbaijan is interested in its peoples that live in Iran, and there's a lot of them there. While Iran wants to protect its ethnicity and have some hegemony in the region, including in Iraq. The whole place is a mess, just like the book of Daniel said. When it comes down to the ten toes, friends, go back. <laughs> when it comes down to these people, it will look like they're united, but they're actually a divided people's friends. They only get together, think of it, one hour. In all this time, they're only able to get along with one mind remember the scripture says the lord will give them one mind that they may give their power and their authority to the beast for one hour and that hour will be a deadly hour but it won't last long remember the lord will shorten those days hallelujah I'm going to end the video. How was that? <laughs> Hope that was okay. I will be back again soon, friends. I might do longer videos like this. Maybe one time a week. Once a week. Because I have time throughout the week then to add to it as I go along. Wonderful scriptures that give us so much insight, so much information. Praise the Lord. Keep your heart open to the lord listen to him when you go into prayer heavenly father help us <clears throat> help us father help us to know your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding give us discernment for the days ahead heavenly father in the name of your son jesus christ protect us father protect our homes our loved ones our children our pets Keep us safe, Father, as we surrender to you. Keep your people strong, my Father, for the days ahead. Give us wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Help us to be a people who are prepared, people who have hope, who can give answers to the world, who will be asking lots of questions when everything goes wrong. And yet we are the only people who know what's coming. Imagine the privilege, the honour we have, friends. Anyway. Hallelujah. I'll be back again soon. Let me close all this down. Keep Israel in prayer. Keep Israel in prayer while this is going to go on for the next 30 days or so, friends. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Everything happens according to God's purposes. In Jesus' name. I'll see you next week. Lots of love.